Good day, everyone. My name is Jiaxuan Liu. I'm going to share my PowerPoint uh, already. So I hope you can see it. Yes? OK, great. Uh, it is really nice to see everyone online. And I'm happy that uh, there are some colleagues with me So in the meeting room. We can uh, do some uh, discussion later. Yeah, what I'm happy with is uh, uh, you can see in the humanity or sociology, we seldom talking about the health. And today I'm going to introduce the health uh, uh, field into the sociology and also humanity. And I hope you can give me some feedback as well. So today's topic is uh, justification of COVID policies. Uh, why it is uh, interesting. Let's uh, go to the next slide. Health, uh, usually we think it is a medical issue, but actually it is not. Uh, if you can see this uh, um, photo, what bring you the first impression? Yes? If you have your ideas, you can type on the chat, and I would be very happy to read them later. So you can see that uh, the class or the richness sometimes tells the differences with our health. Uh, we can already imagine that. So there are new discussions. Excuse me. The slides uh, went off. Uh, yeah. There are some uh, sociologists or in the healthcare professionals, we are trying to redefine health. And one of my favorite scholars is Marmot from London. He explained uh, health actually are the conditions uh, in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age. So it is not just a, a physical clockwise uh, model that our health works, but uh, it is a complete whole, we say it, uh, a whole person uh, that present or manifest in our society. So is health a medical issue? We say that health is a social issue because the environment actually will fill up our health or to uh, damage our health. Now, let me introduce myself. My name is Jia Xuan Liu. So I'm a specialist in the health and care, education, social policy, cultural and diversity innovations. So you can read my uh, other profile, maybe online or by Google me. I won't uh, say more here. And you can see one of my specialty, it is public health, or nowadays we say new public health. We discuss uh, the health in the society, how our environment uh, infects uh, our health, and how the environment uh, affects our health as a whole population. One of uh, the public's uh, health we have a global charter, which was developed uh, by the World uh, Federation of Public Health Associations and the WHO in the 2016. So you can see that uh, in this charter, it is not just our physical health or mental health. We're talking about the action, including protection, prevention, promotion, and the implement, uh, impl implementation, including the governance, uh, advocacy, uh, advocacy, information, and the capacity of the society. So let's uh, go further. This is uh, to give you some background ideas uh, before I can further discussion further discuss uh, what is the justification of the COVID policy. And now you can see health is actually in all policies uh, 
people usually ask me or my students will ask me, hey, we are talking about the health uh, uh, in society. Should we just talking about the health prevention or the health care capacity? No, we're also talking about the policies. So you can see there's uh, only part of it is public health, but uh, the rest, uh, it's also related with public trans uh, transport. We're also talking about the good schools to give us, uh, our next generation good health education. We're talking about healthcare. We're also talking about uh, justice uh, systems. So all this actually will support us uh, to have a healthy life uh, in a society. So if we're talking about policy, how can we forget uh, the politics? In the politics, uh, it is a management for the fears of all people. So when we are talking about the health policies or the health in all policies, we need to understand how the politics uh, uh, work works in this uh, context. And of course, uh, the politics, uh, it is a reflection on people's voice because you vote. So what is the voice of people? For the COVID, uh, do you want a vaccine or no COVID vaccine at all? If you are the government, uh, which one are you going to choose? Which side will you stand uh, by? Now we move on to the COVID. Uh, it is a map uh, since the 2019 and to the 2020 March. So you can see in four months time how the spread uh, from China and to the world. After the 2000 uh, January, you can see the speed, uh, uh, the, the speed up of the spread. And uh, let's go to the Netherlands. Netherlands, uh, uh, here you can see until yesterday, or here as reported uh, in the 11th uh, April, there are more than 7 million uh, confirmed cases. I'm not sure if today we already have uh, 8 million. And there are also more than 22,000 deaths. This is uh, what we see in the Netherlands uh, and uh, compared to other countries, you can check the WHO's uh, dash, uh, dashboard. We are going to compare to Taiwan, and this is a Taiwan report uh, also yesterday. Instead of uh, uh, 8 million uh, confirmed cases uh, after two years, you can see there are only 28 or more than 28,000 uh, confirmed cases and the total deaths until today it's 850. What makes uh, differences? Uh, because Taiwan is an island, so we can stop a virus, enter the uh, Taiwan island, or why it is not the case, uh, the 800 uh, uh, death or the first 200 uh, confirmed cases didn't didn't uh, involved into 8 million uh, people's confirmed uh, cases. So we can check the daily news, uh, daily new cases again. This is from the 2020 February to the 2020, oh sorry, uh, until today. You can see the wave of the curve uh, of the new cases uh, until the 2000, the end of uh, or the middle of the 2021st. Uh, Taiwan actually no curve, while other countries are trying to uh, contain the, the virus. But after the uh, the summer of the 2021, it is the new variation of a virus, and you can see there are different curves uh, 
but please note it that uh, on the left hand of your uh, the chart, the left chart, the cases, every numbers there's a K, but in Taiwan, there's only 200 and 400. So how about the death? There's only a peak in the summer of the 2021 in Taiwan on your right side. You can see it, but again, there are different number. The highest peak is only 35. So in the 2020 May, I wrote an article with my colleagues. Uh, it is about the Taiwan COVID-19 measures uh, could be seen, I'll say intrusive, but it seems to save people. And in two days, uh, we, I uh, received more than 400 comments. Uh, that also shows people are really interested in this topic and they have a voice, uh, they want to be heard. Now we moved on, after we understand the background, uh, let's check uh, what is the justification of the COVID policies. Uh, it is one of my research, uh, which is uh, processed right now. Uh, however, it is really difficult. This project should be finished in four months, but I'm still working on it. And I will tell you the challenges later. This is how I do my research. Uh, I try to, to read uh, uh, as much as uh, uh, articles, news, uh, online, uh, news articles, government reports, timelines. There are a lot of things uh, uh, I need to read. In the beginning, I thought I just need to discuss politics, uh, uh, culture, and maybe touch upon some ethical uh, ethical issues, but it is not that simple. I also went back to Taiwan. In the beginning, I wanted to have uh, interviews. However, during the COVID, uh, it is hard to make uh, interview uh, to make uh, appointments with the officials or professionals. Uh, so in the end, I decided to use a new, uh, more anthropological uh, methods. I do the uh, participant observation. And at the same time, since I live in the Netherlands, uh, I also check what happened in my surrounding. And this is the first uh, impression I did. I chose the, some topics uh, that I would like to discuss and uh, trying to get into the idea. And this is uh, a kind of a framework in the beginning. I would like to understand what is the pandemic situation. I want to understand what is the policies related to the border control. I want to understand if there's uh, any re relevant uh, ideas or ideology about the testing or community prevention and so on. However, just like I said, uh, COVID situation or these two years it's uncertain, it's complex and confusing, not only for people who live in the societies, also the government get very confused with the situation. Sometimes they think they have a very good ideas from the science report and uh, make a measures for a measure for their people, but things doesn't turn out uh, like what we want. So interestingly, recently, Taiwan uh, also released a report about this two years and the Taiwan government uh, put it on their website. The focus is the key success factors. So we check uh, what are the key success factors and uh, trying to understand uh, the topics that we're trying to touch upon. Uh, we're talking about the SARS experience. Maybe that uh, tells uh, because, because uh, Taiwan had experienced the SARS uh, crisis and they already developed a kind of uh, a crisis uh, uh, schedule 
agenda, how to contain a pandemic or epidemic uh, when it's happening again. And all information transparency, timely border control, advanced medical technology, and of course, there is a centered uh, command center, good resource a location, smart community prevention, and a good uh, ethic of uh, citizens. Uh, we will come back again. At the same time, in the Netherlands, just a few weeks ago, they also have a report. Uh, but you can see it's very different. Uh, so when Taiwan are promote their success, and in the Netherlands, the report is about uh, what went wrong. There are five points, uh, main points were discussed uh, in the media. It's including the Netherlands underestimated the pandemic. And the second is the healthcare system were not, uh, was not uh, flexible. And there are also silent disaster in the nursing homes, uh, which are overlooked. There are figures and the numbers, but it's resulted in internal vision. And the end uh, is the cabinet uh, offered too much hope to the people. And uh, why it is the, the case uh, in the discussion, maybe we can go deeper with uh, the stories. So now we move to what are the measures uh, these two governments uh, have taken? What's the differences? I try to make a very simple chart uh, to give you some ideas as a background, and uh, later on we can discuss uh, what's going on and trying to explain it. You can see that this chart, so just to let you know, all this uh, uh, information I share with you, just halfway of my research, given us uh, some discussing point, uh, and uh, later on I will keep on working on analyzing and collecting more data to support uh, the ideas. In Taiwan, firstly, you can see the government, how do they um, quickly have a crisis team. Taiwan, in January of 2020, so just uh, two weeks after the COVID uh, uh, cases confirmed in China, they already have a same uh, Center for Disease Control already involved in, and a uh, few weeks later, they have the Central Epidemic uh, Command Center. And uh, in the Netherlands, uh, until March, they started to have the outbreak uh, management uh, team. Maybe that's also what uh, uh, the, the report, the government report, said uh, the Dutch government uh, was uh, underestimated the pandemic situation. And then the focal point, you can see Taiwan. Every day, they have a local confirmed cases report. A board to confirm the cases and also the number of deaths. But uh, in the Netherlands, uh, focusing on the R number, so above one or under one, and also the ICU capacity. In the communication, Taiwan has, uh, even now, they still have a daily press conference or news. But in the Netherlands, uh, during the peak, we have a bi-weekly press uh, conference. And in the policy and the strategy, Taiwan mainly use mitigation measures, but in the Netherlands, they have a, a very uh, sexy word uh, called uh, maximum control strategy. And what is that? I'm going to explain later. And for the implementation, you can see Taiwan use very uh, strict uh, uh, measurement, quarantine, isolation, digital tracing, border policies. Uh, and the Netherlands also very strict, but we call it uh, in intelligent lockdown. And the quarantine isolation, but the quarantine and isolation, it is a strong suggested. Uh, it is no really legal uh, uh, power to intervene in people's life. For the legislation, 
Taiwan in the 2019. So actually, for after the SARS, they already have a, a Disease Control Act. But in the 2019, they have a, a, how do you say revisit uh, this uh, uh, Disease Control Act and give the very strong base uh, to react to the pandemic in the first month or the first week of uh, uh, this COVID-19. And in the Netherlands, uh, until April 24, the Emergency Act uh, was uh, on force. So what is the containment uh, control strategy? Or in Dutch words, we say the maximum control. <laughs> uh, it's including closing down schools. It's a uh, curfew. It is closing the border and uh, no public events and uh, just like what you see all the non-necessary business should be closed uh, or stay at home working uh, method and in the mitigation measurement it is mainly personal prevention you can see mask uh, washing hands clean the surface all the time and the one thing is very interesting, you can see the photo in the restaurant because we don't prevent in Taiwan, uh, the government didn't prevent you not to go to the public uh, spaces. So in the restaurant, uh, they actually have a board to stop you or your saliva to reach another person. And it's really not fun <laughs> at all to have a dinner in a restaurant and with other family or friends. So afterwards, uh, reading all this, and I started to pick up uh, other keywords, including politics, uh, political systems, stakeholders, the illness perceptions, how people Live in illness or the pandemic and public surveillance. Actually, it was uh, one of the key issues I would like to discuss uh, how a public government can be, uh, can put their hand in people's uh, daily life. So I go back to check uh, what we teach in the class to the students about public health and the social policy. We can see there are some uh, elements which affect we see the public health, not from the medical or health prevention point uh, or intervention point, but from how the environment uh, affect our public health. There are values, uh, how we see the values of our life or health, what is the ideology? What is the systems of ideas and ideals? Who are their stakeholders? What are their powers? And if there's a political economy, which affect our daily life. What I found these words are quite relevant. Evidence requires understanding Limited resources imply choices. Do the government or our society have enough evidence? Or how can we interpret this evidence and make choices or the right choices? What are the values or preferences of the society? And what are our world views on this pandemic? Politics as a sense making. And you can see, answer these questions, uh, there are hidden arguments uh, which we usually don't talk about. But answers to these questions will help us uh, or the stakeholders to understand uh, what are the facts uh, and uh, what we can do from different uh, angles. And this is actually what I like about uh, the Dutch society, but sometimes there are two many different voices and it also bring the complex uh, 
complexity to making choice or choice making. Then we move to the political systems. There are three ways to look at it. I chose Taiwan and the, the Netherlands because they suppose are democratic uh, uh, governance entities. And then I look into their liberal or authoritarian system and if there's uh, other things we can look into it. You can see that uh, in Taiwan and in the Netherlands. So are Taiwan more authoritarian or the Netherlands is too liberal? We say that uh, uh, it uh, depends on how the society or the systems uh, look at them. Do they want to have a more autonomy support or they are looking for a big brother or father figure to take care of them? And in Taiwan, we probably can see it is more a nanny state or a helping for, helpful friend. So they have a very good uh, uh, communications with the systems or citizens to ask everyone, yeah, please uh, follow in the majors because we are taking care of you. We are not controlling you, but we are helping you. So we go back, uh, we go further to the individualism and uh, collectivism. Earlier, I received an interview to talking about the cultural theories. And then we see in the Netherlands, Spain and Sweden, Sweden, they have different ideas about uh, their culture and it lead to different COVID majors as well. For example, in Spain, they try to avoid uh, uncertainty. So maybe that's a reason they give more power to the government uh, or the authority and lead to more strict measures uh, and they're also more willing to follow these measures. But if you compare to Sweden or Netherlands, uh, the story is different. So how about Taiwan? It's probably the same. Because if we really think that Asian has the collective tendency, it's probably, it is a reason why they follow the measure better. But does the individualism suit well with the pandemic health major approach? My question to you, do you think it is true or not? So since we talking or already touch upon the the individualism or culturalism, we need to think over the culture. Yeah, that is a mean in Taiwan. We are trying to explain uh, why the Western people, they don't like uh, uh, have a mask. And they say it because it is not cool. Because if you are cool, you need to cover your eyes. <laughs> and uh, in an in Taiwan or in Asia, if you see the uh, movies about the ancient time, the cool heroes, they cover their mouths. So cover the mouth is cool. It's just a mean, so don't take it uh, serious. <laughs> but uh, uh, okay, there's another thing. It is the same time, 2020, May. In the Netherlands, the right hand sir. Uh, we have a very good weather after the long winter time or long COVID time. So even though there's a peak, there's a still in the uh, smart lockdown, but people just went to the beach. And on the left side, it is Taiwan. It's also in May. At that time, you see the peak. Huh? So we have uh, about 200 people are uh, affected infected with the COVID, the whole country. Then the next day after the news, uh, there are no cars uh, in the city. People just worried uh, to death. Is it a culture thing? 
So I try to understand it and I try to pick up some Asian uh, wisdoms and the Western wisdom. In the Asia, we say to do one's level best and leave the rest to the God's will. So you really need to do your best to protect yourself. But in the Western, it is a God that chooses, not men. So, yeah, what I can do, I can do if I don't, uh, the God's wish, right? It is just uh, some ideas I have. I didn't have the evidence to prove it yet, uh, but uh, just make it a note for myself uh, and maybe for you to think about. Uh. There's also another photos I want to show because I found it is also very uh, interesting to tell the story. In Taiwan, uh, I visit a shop and I ask the restaurant uh, uh, boss, like, uh, why you are half closed? You only, uh, how do you say, do the takeaway business. I know that in Taiwan, there's no restrictions uh, about uh, open or close uh, down the restaurant. And he said, uh, you know what, I also very worried to be infected. If uh, I don't have my life, if I lost my life, how can I make a business or how can I earn money? At the same time, in the Netherlands, I also interviewed uh, a restaurant uh, uh, owner. And he said, uh, if, don't, if I don't have money, what is the life for? So it's very interesting to see how they uh, picture their life or to rationalize their life about money and uh, life economic and health. So I think this is also a point we can look further with it. So what are the challenges to me? I collect uh, rich data or maybe too much. Uh, it is explosive. Uh, every day's news I'm trying to uh, minimize them for now. And there's also continuously updated reports are releasing. Uh, I released their complexity. I already talked about it and so on. So what will be my next? I try to provide arguments about policy making. So why there's a major? So it, are the people's voice are heard? and trying to provide a structure for further consideration in the future. Other topics? I also found other topics uh, interesting, but uh, uh, in my research, I probably can't uh, touch upon it. There are conspiracy, or in Taiwan, we say it, uh, fake news. There are also economy issues versus uh, the political ideology. There are victim blaming and the discriminations happening. And also for the global political determinants of health. So that's it. Thank you very much.